it's actually time to pray. It is Asher. If you guys know, I'm Muslim, so I got my alarm on that reminds me. That's what that noise was. Um, anyways, I'm at this Noel Anderson show. Um, here you go. We're at the CAC here in Cincinnati. I'm going to do my best to do an art tour and um, have different things that relate to fashion in so many ways. And the reason I created Jungle by PD3 was to explain in a really creative way, in a really curated way, in a really creative directive way, um, the lessons that fashion has taught me about life um, and how fashion and fabrics and textiles and, and um, I don't know, just so many different elements of of what we understand as fashion and clothing relate to just everyday life. So I'm out here at this show, and I'm going to show you guys around the Noel Anderson show and um, kind of explain a little bit about aesthetic with you guys and how important, uh, how aesthetic keeps playing over and over. It's been a, a trendy, it's been a trendy thing to say and a trendy thing for artists and a trendy thing for designers, but what is it? what is it um the aesthetic of this room right now is related to black culture this artist is created this show that speaks about black culture right and what they did in this room what they did in this room was create something that was um Excuse me. What they did in this room was create something that felt familiar to what they understand as black culture. So whether or not you agree with what I'm about to say about the space in a um, kind of art critic kind of way, um, I'm telling you this because, or I'm explaining it like this because, um, that's how aesthetic works. It has to come from one's own experience and it has to come from the experience of like social, like people, you know what I'm saying? Um, so for example, I can relate to this in a quote unquote black American way. Um, these tapestry kind of dirty rugs that I've literally seen that so many apartments that are in projects like where black people in in, in, in project neighborhoods ghetto neighborhoods um, poor, poor class black neighborhoods a lot of them have like rugs that look like this and um, what's interesting is like there's things like this white castle there's things like this white castle wrapper you know supposedly we're always eating white castle and like um, a lot of ghetto houses had this certain smell and a certain type of amount of dirt. You know, I, I'm not trying to say that this is only black because I've definitely lived where there's a lot of poor white people. So I might have seen something similar, but it wasn't, it wasn't so, it wasn't exact, you know what I mean? Um, I'm not familiar with all these pieces, so we're going to kind of learn together. Um, I will also come back to this project and explain more about um, what I gained from the Noel Project. So this particular piece is about a um, white murder in the black society. These pieces are all on fabric. They're all textile. They're all wood. I'm sorry, they're all um, wool, if I'm not mistaken. Bag up. And this one I've been staring at for a while, this distorted glitch black and white piece with this police brutality. The whole nature of this space, they're playing like music that would have been aesthetic to black culture in maybe the 60s, 70s. Kind of jazzy, groovy funk. We're very responsible for that bring you to this African piece very historically African art art history ourselves in the news 
how to handle a, maybe it says racist. Experts give us a advice. It says experts, experts gross advice. Something, something, communicating black America. Still, I can't see that word, black America. I love these pieces. What I really want to know is how um, the pieces are like, some, how they're created. Like, I don't know if they're made out of like, like classic tapestry skills. I love this. I'm gonna show you these details. Something very interesting about this, the aesthetic of this piece is the gun, the teeth of the boy, this Nike hat, right? Let me get a little close. The raggedy, 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 raggedy. I, as a black person, myself as a black person, have definitely felt this feeling of being raggedy. And also, feeling like you have a gun to your head or you want to put a gun to your head, right? This one looks familiar. The person looks familiar. They look like James Brown or um, it's like a boxer I'm referring to or maybe um, somebody else. I will find out who this is if it's somebody famous in a minute, okay? And this is a really cool one, um, this comic book piece. Um, very classic Americana <laughs> um, styled. Um, America is definitely kind of responsible for that kind of pop, well, sort of kind of responsible for that pop culture of comics and commentary. The aesthetic of this, he's, the person has definitely opened the aesthetic of this room. Photography, photography, news, photography, and even this strange comic piece at the end. And check it, let's see, the fashion of the the fashion of the black man, his lips are big. He's got a shirt that we would, right now, there's so many t-shirts out there right now that are like, like Black Lives Matter. So he's wearing this hands up, don't shoot shirt, but he's still getting shot, his big lips and his saggy pants. And the fashion of a policeman, their uniform, even the fashion of how he's got his head turned, like he doesn't care and the other guy doesn't care either. The fashion of us even thinking that cops don't really care and they could just do whatever. That's crazy, right? Says, um, you saw it, he was going for my weapon. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna stop the broadcast here and check out the rest of, and check out the rest of the, um, show a little bit so I can make sure that like, I think there's a, another artist on the opposite side. So I'm gonna end with this piece. I really love this one. It's so big, it's so beautiful. Um, it's heartbreaking, but I don't know. I feel like I've come a long way from feeling like this, though I know that it's in my community as a black person. What I feel more like as a black person is this piece right here. This piece has liberated to me. It's almost like the sky is behind this person and even hurt or harm like his arm is missing can still reach to the sky and and in prayer and, and meditative respect almost definitely love this piece um and i definitely love this one because this one relates to a lot of stuff that we're gonna do with jungle by pt3 coming up okay ciao you guys thanks for your thanks for your time